I couldn't do it in the economy. I think it'd probably kill me. For the elite echelon of Britain's wealthy. A glass of champagne. Absolutely, Dom Perignon. Cheers, thank you. Flying first class is the only way to travel. You get treated like royalty, to be honest with you, in first class. Your Royal Highness, how are you? With tickets costing as much as £10,000 for a single journey. If I had the money, I would never fly economy. I would always turn left. I would never turn right. Rivalry between airlines to attract the super rich is at an all-time high. You get a meal like you would get in a restaurant. No <coughs> Katy Perry, Nicki Minaj type of lashes, please. Singapore Airlines was once voted Airline of the Year, but intense competition has caused profits to nosedive. There's that race to premium passengers' pocket. So to outdo its rivals, the airline is announcing a half a billion pound upgrade. This is a really defining moment because they're trying to be a market leader again. With a new first class built in Britain. This is the biggest thing we've ever worked on. This table costs probably the, the same value as a Mondeo. So in the cutthroat world of luxury air travel... They expect everything to be perfect. Everyone loves to look at beautiful things. Girl next door. <laughs> Singapore girl. Will it be enough to satisfy the world's richest? That's quite a fast-closing toilet seat. Just disappointed. And outclass its competitors. Nothing in first class is necessary. It's about what they can impress you with. Another glass of champagne, maybe? London Heathrow, with 75 million passengers travelling through each year. It's one of the world's busiest airports. Singapore Airlines transports over half a million passengers from the UK. Making sure everything runs smoothly for the airline... No, no, no. Yeah. ...is customer services officer Michael Andreu. I mean, there's a stop. You You're causing a scene, aren't you, my love? I've been working for uh, Singapore Airlines for 28 years. Technology for you. Yeah, it's not for me. It's not for me. <laughs> Always fun. You have to enjoy your work environment. You have to love what you do because it comes through. Next, please, sir. It's part of Michael's job to look after the airline's first-class passengers. We actually do deal with a lot of celebrities. The world's most prestigious passengers want to fly with you, which is great. So we are here to receive you. Good evening. Good evening. Today, 90-year-old first-class regular Gertrude Louis... Thank you. ...is travelling to Singapore, where she has a permanent residence. Just like the business times, please. She's been travelling the same route in first class for over 40 years. I will not travel on any other because of the service, because of the clientele, because of the comfort and the efficiency. Hi, how are you, Mrs. Hello. Louis? Good to see you. Are you OK? Yes, thank you. Good nice to see you. Please come yes, forward. thank you. At check-in, Michael is on hand to provide the personal touch. Yes, so this is suite 3A, my love. That's right. You're that's very good. familiar that's with that good. seat. You yes, are always your yes. favourite seat. Fabulous. All done, right? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you look very smart. Thank you. Yeah, I look like a cabin crew, don't I? I look like a steward. <laughs> I say bye bye to you here, Mrs. Oh, Louis. Bye bye. Yeah. All the best. Bye, Mrs. Louis. What a fabulous lady. What a character. I mean, she's 90 years old, and she is fantastic. I love her. So this is our sweets class. Ten years ago, the airline turned heads in the world of luxury travel by introducing private cabins marketed as suite class. The design caused a stir by featuring double beds for couples. Shall I demonstrate for you what it looks like? Um, so... So it's very comfortable and you can sleep and and dream, um, and if you're a single person, you know, you can manoeuvre, um, you can choose to change positions, um, you can be on your side, you can be on your back, um, you, can, you can sit up, you have a little shutter, you can close your, your door, and you have privacy all along, so it's great. God, I'm so comfortable. I can fall asleep as we speak. After the original suites were introduced, rival airlines upped the ante with ever more decadent innovations, with some even putting showers on board. 
Singapore Airlines has had its profits dramatically dented by intense competition, causing its share prices to plummet. So now it's making a staggering investment of half a billion pounds, more than double its yearly profits, into new cabin interiors. And today is unveiling a new first-class suite. Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present Space Made Personal featuring Singapore Airlines' all-new suites. With such high stakes, the announcement is big industry news. Demands are changing. The business is very competitive. First-class passengers demand more customization, more personalization, more exclusivity, more privacy. Attending the launch is 20-year-old aviation analyst Alex Macheras. With 70,000 followers on social media, Hi. his opinion can have a lasting impact on an airline's reputation. That's very cool. By launching this huge product, this you know ultra luxe first class, is in retaliation and in competition with the market leaders in the premium world, which tends to be from the Middle East. Ultimately, airlines in the Middle East have huge budgets they spend on, on cabin design. So it's you know they're constantly outdoing each other. There's that race to the premium passenger's pocket between the Middle East and Singapore. In just a few weeks' time, the new suites will go into service on an inaugural launch flight from Singapore to Sydney. When he's not travelling the world reporting on multi-million pound aviation deals, Alex lives with his mum in Essex. So this is my room. Alex's passion for aviation began at a young age. That was probably my earliest aviation memory, was, was reading Richard Branson's book about age seven or eight and reading how he spoke about aviation. When I was reading it, I was thinking, wow, you know, I was really identifying with that. And in fact, the library took the book off of me at school because it was meant to be an adult read, so the school were really preventing entrepreneurship. <laughs> From being immersed in the aviation world so much, I could probably tell you the onboard announcements in about 10 different languages. You know, while not knowing those languages perfectly, you know, it's, uh, it's something that's just gone into my brain. Go on then. It's like, for example, in Arabic the other day, I found myself being able to, to just recite which is welcoming everyone onto 454, bound for Doha, departing shortly, which is something that I've never learned, but it's just gone in. As part of his job, he's invited by airlines to test out new planes before they go into service. So when an airline orders a plane, I'm often part of that delivery that takes the aircraft from where it was born, which is the factory, to the destination. Destination can be anywhere. Airlines all over the world are ordering planes. Sometimes it's, it was Mauritius last month, the month before it was Luton. So it's, uh, it varies. Alex has been invited to test Singapore Airlines' new jet. As well as the half a billion pounds in new interiors, they're also renewing their fleet of Airbus A380s, ordering five new ones. The world's largest passenger plane each A380 costs £350 million, pounds, the price of 3,000 family cars. The airline is entrusting the luxurious first-class upgrade to a manufacturer 7,000 miles from Singapore, in South Wales. On an industrial estate in the small town of Cumbran near Newport, Zodiac creates some of the most luxurious aeroplane seats in the world. But Singapore Airlines' new first-class concept, four years in the making, is proving to be a challenge. We're certainly pushing boundaries on this product. It's a, a suite that um, is more like a hotel room on an aircraft of 30,000 feet. In an attempt to outclass their rivals, their new design is to have a fully flat bed and a separate rotating seat, a design they believe no other airline has attempted. The philosophy is very much a, a luxury and giving the customers something unique, an individual seat and a bed, which makes this very special. A class leader, never been done before. The cost for one of these suites would probably cost you the same as a, um, a three-bedroom house. It's Gareth's job to wire up the suite's electronic control system. Each cable does his own job, like. So you've got recline functions, leg rest functions, massage functions. Cable ties are my friends, I like to lock them up. <laughs> it's funny, sounds cheesy. I might use more than, say, the next guy. They're there for the reason, they're there to make it look tidy, they're there to hold things in place. If it looks nice and neat, chances are it's right. Do you have a phone for us, Cass? 
No. You probably never will either. Not unless this place pays for it. <laughs> exact costs are a closely guarded secret, but no expense has been spared, even on the simplest of items. So this is one of our tables. It goes through a process of anodization, and that's a very expensive process. This table uh, would cost probably the, the same value as a car, maybe a Mondeo. To satisfy the demands of their client, Zodiac are having to work to higher standards than usual. Well, the specification for this customer is they want all the components tested three times. Is that normal? No. So this, this is pretty new for us. It's, you know, it's a high-value product, so it's got to be you know, reliable. Singapore are very specific. They actually want creases in the product, and they specify how many creases they want in specific areas. And in this case, we have too many, so there's going to be reduced by two more creases. They are top-end customers, and uh, if they want creases and wrinkles in, then uh, that's what we give them. To refit the airline's entire fleet of 19 A380s, Zodiac have to build over 100 suites. With the inaugural flight of the first new plane just weeks away, the team is racing to get them ready for the discerning first-class passengers who will give their verdict. When you buy a new car or a new type, you want to use it as soon as possible. It's exactly the same. We are all driving uh, to get as much product out to Singapore as possible. I've never seen nothing like this before. Like, mad to see that things like this out there actually exist. Like, it's nice to see all the other half living it and how they ride, how they fly. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free, no subscription required. Singapore, a former British colony. This small country attracts nearly half a million tourists a year from the UK. And with English an official language, it's home to 50,000 expats. After it gained independence from the UK in 1963, the national airline expanded and established itself on the world stage. A new giant that's more than just another jumbo. Becoming a global brand, the airline has a unique importance for some Singaporeans. Singapore is a very small country and it brings you to some kind of national pride when you see an airline like Singapore Airlines going that kind of distance because it puts Singapore on the map. Part of a growing community of global aviation enthusiasts, 40-year-old BK Tan. It's a uh, 787 from San Francisco, United One. Is particularly excited by the airline's upgrade. It's a very big deal for Singapore Airlines because this is the next big thing for the airline itself. Um, it's a totally refreshed cabin and it's challenging Emirates basically head on. BK lives in the family home in suburban Singapore. So this is my house. These are my parents. Hello. Hi. Hello. These are my two nieces. All right, so welcome to my room. <laughs> Basically, it's a paradise of Singapore Airlines. <laughs> With over 200 model aircraft, BK is a self-confessed AV geek. So an AV geek is someone who is defined to have um, a passion for aviation and the passion is a flame that never dies down. The temptation to actually purchase aircraft models will always be there. It's like being a drug addict. There's a lot of aeroplanes. I don't know how much money he spent on this. Wasted a lot of money. And it's not just model aircraft that BK spends his money on. They agreed to be in the Kabaya today, which is the Singapore Airlines uh, flight attendant uniforms. I have it all in their sizes, so it's small, medium and large. <laughs> yeah. The cabin crew uniform is central to the airline's brand. Who are you? Do I know you? You're so lovely. Where... In the 1970s, the airline began advertising campaigns using its female crew, known as Singapore Girls. The image of the Singapore girl, basically, she's meant to be demure, warm, provide world-class service. It has been a concept that Singapore Airlines lives by, breathes by. The Singapore girl concept was created by British-born advertising executive Ian Beatty, who wanted to market what he described as naturally attractive Asians to Western customers. 
Despite attracting controversy over the years, the image of subservient femininity is still promoted by the airline today. Former cabin crew Lim Sweat Kui Do we look alike? had the honour of being selected to be immortalised in wax in London's Madame Tussauds. Here we are. This is the waxwork that was done in 1993. In the 90s, Singapore Airlines was big. Today, of course, we face competition, but with all this competition, we have to maintain that standard no matter what. Each year, around 1,000 male and female recruits begin their intensive cabin crew training on a course which the airline claims is twice the industry standard. Come on, let's go. Ms. Ninja, may I offer you a drink after takeoff? Typically, a new crew will expect to undergo a 14-week training program. OK, stop there. OK, so you're not using your service hand because you're not facing the passenger. Oh, OK. That's correct. What we know? To serve the premium classes, a select few are given sommelier training. Flavour characters? Cabbage. Do you get nutmeg? Cabbage. They will have deportment to make sure they walk right grooming classes to make sure that they look right. A new batch of recruits are in their first week. We're going to start with the makeup demo. OK, so please take it down, your notes. Today, they are under the tutelage of grooming consultant Amy Lim. Open your eyes, look down. Sometimes you need to add more intensity to make your eyes a bit more attractive. Open. Nice. Girl next door. <laughs> <laughs> Singapore girl. OK. Our girls. Are you guys excited to achieve that look for me? Yes. OK, so cabin crew, your time starts now. By the end of the day, the recruits will have to prove they can master the rigorous grooming regime. On the other side of the world, the airline's strict standards are being felt in South Wales. Um, if you've got something else to identify, you've got to line up. Sorry, I can't see it. That on the edge. See? Up there. Yeah. Where it's delivery day for a set of new first class suites. I don't know if it just needs a clean up or a polish or what's there. I'll want to see it all in place first before we sign off. Okay. For the airline to ensure their specifications are met, quality inspector Mick Murphy is on site. This isn't the condition you'll no, be no, able to ship in with that. He needs to approve the suites before they are delivered to the plane. This suite will be shipping tonight. The delivery schedule is very tight and there's a lot of pressure on to get this done. I've effectively got to see it through until the end now, so... One of the suite's biggest selling points is the deployable bed. But Mick's been told there's a problem with the latch. OK, so the problem we've got, right, the bed doesn't latch. If you put pressure on it, it latches OK. Yeah? Right. And what's happening, why it's so stiff, is because it's slightly out of alignment of the hole until, because there's a clash there between that and that. Yep. But at, the, at present, we haven't got a fix for it. Now, that's, that's, the that's the only item stopping us stripping it down. With the deadline looming, Mick must either sign them off or delay the delivery. Rob. The installation team are phoning for an update. They've got some, some problems with the latching of the beds now, so I think it's going to be into the night tonight. There's no time left. This has got to go today. The aircraft is currently waiting on this now. With no time left, Mick's got to make a decision. So you're going to be looking at a commitment letter for the changing of your latches, Steve? He chooses to send the suites to the plane, where an on-site team will have to work on the problem. At this time, we have allowed the breakdown of the unit for shipment. This is out of process, but we're out of time. As work on the new first class continues, the airline is about to be upstaged by a direct competitor. In a surprise move, its fierce rival Emirates has unveiled their own new suite, and it's already in service. Alex has been keeping track of its inaugural flight. So, one of my colleagues is on the first Emirates brand new first class suites flight from Dubai to Brussels, and uh, he has just sent me a video. Hey, Alex. Show you around the new Emirates suite. Yeah. Back, right? This is my suite 1E. Got this huge 32 inch screen right here in the Nothing front. Vanity pops up. 
got the ceiling here with all these Ooh, lights nice. that I can control. So I've yeah. uh, got a tablet that I can use to communicate with the flight attendants, virtual windows. Great, very impressive. Emirates have gone all out here, you know, as per usual. To have two gigantic airlines, I mean, Emirates is probably main non-Middle Eastern competitor, Singapore Airlines, unveil and release brand new first class products is, is unheard of. The timing really shows how it's just constantly neck and neck in this race to win first class passengers. Singapore Airlines passengers flying from Heathrow are given the VIP treatment by customer service officer Michael Andreu. I'm very good at spotting our first business class passengers. They've just got this aura about them, a very chic, just fabulous looking all around really. So yeah, I, I can. Sometimes I get it wrong, but mostly I'm, I'm quite, quite right. Today, Michael is escorting Michael Gore from Wigan. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hello. You okay? Yeah, good to see you. See you. All right. Yeah, you? Yeah. Hello, sir. Hello. Who makes a living selling diesel engine parts and is taking a business trip to Shanghai in suite class. Yes, I am, yes. Each year, the airline spends over £10 million on their wine and champagne selection. Buying more Dom Perignon than any other airline, and the Krug is £200 a bottle. That's my favourite drink now, Rosie, to be honest with you. I won't drink the champagne on here because I enjoy it on board. They've got, they've got vintage Krug at the moment instead of the normal Krug, which is fabulous. I'm hoping they still have it because the Krug bar that's in the private room has been changed now, so I'm wondering if the Krug on board's changed back to regular stuff. First world problems, granted, but it's, it's nice stuff. Thank you. See you again. Thank you very much. You get treated like royalty, to be honest with you, in first class. That's the way it feels, anyway. Hey, vintage. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. We're going to drink in Krug in Singapore Airlines first class. The world must be going mad. Are you comfortable? I am, and it's still the vintage. Another so glass of champagne, maybe? I will certainly get through another one of those before takeoff. I'll let them know. Yeah, okay. cheers. At the training centre, recruits must graduate the rigorous course to begin their careers at the lowest rank, but not everyone makes it to the top. When you get to the upper ranks, you tend to have lesser girls up there. You have more guys. Why is that? There. Because many of the women will obviously start a family and uh, they leave us. The men will, will be able to stay on. They don't have to worry about putting on weight after childbirth. We do have a returning mother scheme, but of course, you know, when they come back, they must be able to fit into the uniform, yes? Yes, because I think that would be the expectation of your customer. What if they don't? Uh, then they need to lose the weight. A new batch of cabin crew... Top, top, girls. ..are getting to grips with the airline's grooming regime. As well as makeup techniques... You need to tease. ..hairstyles are also strictly regulated. We have special hairstyles that will complement a kabaya, for example, a bob hairstyle, um, a bun. We need to make sure that it's round shape, it's within the guideline. OK, it's 6.5 cm. OK, so this is the minimal size. Maximum, it's... Seven. All right, ladies. At the end of the one-day course... Your time is up already. Sit down. Chop, chop. It's now time for grooming consultant Amy Lim to judge whether they've met the airline standard. The eye circles. Yeah. So you need to sleep, OK? OK. I wouldn't say I'm straight, but um, I would say that I'm working towards what's best for the company's image. Your ears is a little bit on the obvious side. So tomorrow I wanted your hair to cover your ears. I'm, I'm sure it looks better. As well as scrutinising their makeup skills, Amy dictates how long they can have their hair. OK, girls, this is the time when I'm telling you whether you're cutting your hair or not. OK, so I really stand by tissue paper. OK, you can cry buckets of tears, but you know what you need to do, right? Yes. yes. Your bun is kind of small. Turn around. Turn around, OK. OK, you've got a lot of baby hair. Can you cover more forehead on your hair? Yeah, cover, cover. OK, congratulations. You get to keep your hair. <laughs> What's going on? Hmm? Next. Hurry up. Oh, my god. Yeah. Yes, yes. Blusher, I barely can see anything. Eyeshadow blending, not too bad. But I need you to cut your hair. Cut my hair? 
Mm. Okay, because when you tie like this, you look like a young mother-in-law hiding in that bun then. But if you spot it with a bot, it makes it look more young. Okay. At London Heathrow... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... The high expectations of first-class passengers can create challenges for the staff looking after them. So we um, we have quite a big um, a big movement on our flight this morning. It's uh, some of our VIPs that are travelling out. They are um, quite influential um, VIPs. They are um, members of royal family, but that's all I can say. <laughs> Sorry. Great. Thank you very much, guys. When royalty flies, customer services officer Michael Andreu likes to go the extra mile. Let's see what this state of this aircraft is like. We do take extra care when it's somebody important traveling, make sure that everything is done properly. Not that it's not done at all times, but extra care is needed. Everything looks great. The aircraft is immaculate. There's no dust. Uh, fit for royalty, fit for our clients fit for anyone that travels Singapore Airlines because everybody's a VIP to Singapore Airlines. Thank you, cabin crew. All done. Thanks a lot, yeah? Michael waits for the royals at the gate. I'm OK. <laughs> a bit nervous, but I'm OK. I don't know why I'm nervous. I know them, but, you know, you just want everything to go right, don't you? So... <laughs> Your Royal Highness, how are you? Good to see you again. Hello, how are you? Nice to see you. Hello, how are you, Dad? As members of the Brunei royal family board the plane, Michael's job is complete. Yeah, so that, as you saw, that, that went quite well. They're very chatty, they're very friendly. Um, they, they, they're really nice, so I'm quite pleased with the way that everything was handled by by us and everyone involved. No matter how many times I sit by this window and look at the aircraft push back, you just get a sense of um, greatness and it's quite emotional, actually. I get moved. Till next time. In their efforts to retain such illustrious customers, the airline aims to make their first-class food fit for royalty. In their specialist kitchens at the airline's headquarters, 40,000 meals are prepared every day. All right, so here we are in our premium kitchen. In charge of the in-flight meals across the entire global fleet is chef Herman Freidank. As you can see, this is real individual cooking. This is the salmon for a first-class client. It will look like and taste like, more important, tastes like uh, a restaurant dish. For first class, everything is individually prepared to Herman's strict specifications. Every dim sum has exactly 11 folds. Seriously. Here we would do three, 4,000 of these every day, fresh. But making sure that food surpasses the competitors is a high-tech business. This is our robot. He's delivering gem. RTD2 version, you know, 10.6 or something like that. Cabin pressure affects flavour. So Herman creates aircraft conditions on the ground. So what we have here is the lobster. To make sure first-class specialities like lobster thermidor taste as they should at 30,000 feet. Quite excellent. Very good. It's also Herman's job to keep the first-class meals up to date. We basically prepare the menus, and what we then do is we um, send our menu proposals to the various caterers. And he's planning a trip to London to check that the airline's international caterers have mastered a new first-class menu. The airline's first-class suites, built by Zodiac in Wales, are being fitted into the first new Airbus A380. 
Josh from Zodiac is managing the installation. So we're going to take a look at 2F if that's OK. OK. And hopefully get something signed off. Yeah. Scrutinising the work for the airline is technical officer Chin Tech Chiang. All right, this door is OK. OK, so now we know the standard. Yeah. Yeah, OK. OK. Cool. All right. One of the engineering challenges has been getting the bed latch working smoothly. The issue was... Difficult to engage. Yeah. Yep. So what, what I found is, is that actually, if you push it all the way back... OK. Push it in. OK. It's tight, right? It's tight. Yeah. But you can get it in. Let me try. Okay, it's not. I can't latch it further. Yeah. Because it's not aligned. So, you, you have to manipulate it slightly. But this one is can't even go in. You think? Okay. So issue number one is okay. It's stiff. ZS UK is already working on a long-term solution. This so is, this this is no go. No, no go. go. Yeah. Because uh, if the operation is so stiff, my crew cannot operate. I think we cannot accept that. So it's a no go. Okay. I need your guys to adjust to their best effort. OK, I'll, I will ask uh, the boys to have another attempt at that. OK. OK. Josh's team will have to fix the latch before the launch flight in just a few weeks' time. No good, eh? No good. No good. In the battle to outdo its competitors, it's not just the sweets that need to be perfect. At the kitchens and the airline's catering partners in London, chefs are perfecting a new first-class menu. You are always on edge because you've got a very high standard and, uh, and you just want to get it right. If the food's good, the Herman's happy, and everybody's happy. Today, Herman has arrived from Singapore to test whether it's up to his standards. Everything must be tasted and signed off before it can be served to passengers. Today, we are testing food for the inaugural flight. All right. Has to be, of course, perfect. The expectations, of course, are that you get a meal like you would get in a restaurant. And we're going to start with the... Baked celibate. OK. One of the important things, of course, is that the colours have to match. And, of course, the cooking has to be right. Very good. Thank you, Chef. Excellent. Thank you. If I'm happy, then the pressure's not too bad. But uh, it can sometimes go the other way. Sometimes. To keep the menu up to date, Herman has challenged Chef Chung to create a brand new dish of herbal duck. Got a new plane, got to have a bit of a new dish too, so... If Herman likes it, Chung's new dish could make it onto the menu. If not, it's back to the drawing board. It tastes good. They're very nice. Some dishes on the menu are passenger favourites, and Herman must be sure they can be served correctly every time. Feel it stay? OK. Once the meat is cooked, that's the way it is, right? And uh, particularly with beef, it's always difficult to get the right doneness, which in this case... Yeah, you see that? So how? It's your guys who have to control it a little bit, right? Because this is not going to work out. Give it another try. A first class passenger certainly don't expect an overcooked piece of beef. This is the dress rehearsal, right? So if something doesn't work out well, before I leave today, it has to be fixed. After four years' work, the newly completed plane is now ready to fly. It will be delivered from the Airbus factory to Singapore, where in a few days' time, it will make its inaugural flight to Sydney, Australia, with paying passengers on board. This is the new A380, featuring the cabin products that you have all been waiting to see. Aviation analyst Alex is part of a hand-picked press pack invited on board the exclusive delivery flight he'll have a chance to review the new first-class suite. This is a really defining moment for Singapore Airlines because they're now re-entering a market that has completely changed, that has completely evolved, and they're trying to be a market leader again. They haven't achieved anything just yet. You know, it's still, it still has to be determined whether or not they have got it right. And of course, they think they have, and they hope they have. You've got competitors that are watching constantly 
every single move is judged. A bad review from Alex can affect an airline's reputation. Despite being on over 100 delivery flights... I'm genuinely so excited, <laughs> genuinely so excited. Flying on a brand new plane hasn't lost its shine. Like, I get a genuine, a genuine connection to this aircraft, especially when you see them in pieces. Like, how could you not love a child if you saw a child being born? It's exactly the same with an aircraft. You know, I see it in pieces, then I see it taking off for the first time when I'm flying on it for the first time. Of course, you just have that connection. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> To be here doing the delivery flight is so exclusive. I'm so excited. So we're boarding the delivery flight now of the brand new Airbus A380 bound for Singapore. First ever flight. Good afternoon. Aviation reporter Alex Macheras is on board Singapore Airlines' new plane on its 13-hour delivery flight to Singapore. Hello from cruising at 35,000 feet over Armenia. The seatbelt signs are now off, and he's eager to see the new first-class suites. But there's a slight delay. Is this not ready yet? It's not ready yet. After four years' work, the airline's technical officer, Chintek Chiang, is making sure everything is perfect. Unlatch, latch, unlatch. Latch. So this is the latch that uh, we, I have been, we have been working for very long and uh, so certainly there's a lot of improvement as you can see. Are you happy now? Yes, certainly. Very, very happy. I'm so glad to be on this flight. Thank you. Whilst Chin continues his checks, Alex has free reign to explore the rest of the aircraft. OK, this is an important part of the aircraft. The laps. Toilet seat that's brown. Is it a slow closing toilet lid? Yes. Yeah. That's the good stuff. So, this is the premium upper deck. This is a staircase to heaven. This is one of the huge lavatories for first class. It's amazing. This is where the luxury is. That's quite a fast closing toilet seat. I'm sure that will be rectified when we arrive in Singapore. That's perhaps a bit too fast for, uh, for first class. This is very big. This is very similar to Emirates first class shower suite. And so it's really a shame because they've got all this space. I mean, it would have been great to have a shower here, you know, and be able to, to, to refresh. But it's something they didn't opt for. You know, it's a very cultural thing. Singapore Airlines didn't want it. Um, and that's their choice. This is what a brand new galley looks like. Everything is really large on this aircraft. So large, in fact. That I kind of fit into it. To see this brand new is amazing because once we land, the trolleys will go in, the trolleys will never leave in its commercial flying life. And of course, it's large enough that I fit in it quite comfortably. <laughs> Finally, the new suites part of Singapore Airlines' half a billion pound investment are ready. Hello. Three F is mine. <laughs> and here we are. Wow. With an electronic tablet, passengers don't need to leave their seats. I mean, this is, this is real innovation. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's incredible. That's amazing. This is not like an aircraft at all. And to get to grips with it. 32-inch touchscreen TV. And if they want to rest, they can deploy the separate, now fully functional, bed. So facing forward during takeoff and landing for safety reasons, but then now I'm going to use. So now I'm going to use the table. So I'm going to face the TV. Which swivels me around here. The novelty is just amazing. There's also a seating position facing the window. Raising the blinds. 
This is the best in-flight entertainment. Facing sideways in essentially what is a hotel room in the skies. I'm quite taken aback. So why is this necessary? It's not necessary. Nothing in first class is necessary. Scented candle, creams to reduce jet lag. First class is less about what is necessary and more about what they can impress you with. Of course, it's the paying passengers who will decide ultimately how successful this cabin is. Etihad Airways have the apartment. I've flown that. And I've flown in all the other first class airlines. This has changed the way now I will travel when I fly Singapore Airlines. To fly facing the view is perfect. If you need me, I'll be here, OK? <laughs> Touching down in Singapore, there are just a few days before the plane will carry paying passengers for the first time to Sydney. One of the passengers on board will be Gino Batuccio, a collector of inaugural flight tickets. In the last 10 years, he's been on over 20 inaugurals, always in first class. I won't say it's an obsession. I will say it's uh, the same feeling of expecting it's something new, it's my, my space, my time. For the eight hour flight to Sydney, Gino's paid over 4,000 pounds for seat 1A. Do you know roughly how much you spent over those years on first class tickets? Let's say a lot of money. The day of the inaugural flight has finally arrived. Aviation enthusiast BK Tan. That's a 777-300ER is on his way to the airport to catch a glimpse of the plane taking off. Spotting aircrafts, uh, knowing the aircraft type is something that I probably cultivated from young. Um, people can call me loony, but uh, I guess that's hidden talents. Um, something like X-Men, isn't it? <laughs> Where you have undiscovered uh, mutant powers. Even for seasoned first-class regular Gino, the new plane is an intriguing prospect. Well, it's a new design uh, for Singapore Airlines. It's a new concept. So I'm very curious how, how it looks. At the airport, it seems the airline has pulled out all the stops to celebrate the launch. Nice atmosphere, nice. Excited. A lot of excitement. Less than a mile away, BK has found a vantage point on the plane's flight path ready for takeoff. Boarding would be around 8.10. Nah, nothing being picked up yet. In all the excitement of the departure ceremony, Gino's having to board in the economy queue. Messy one. Doors should have closed. But Gino's finally on board and turns left for first class. That's not it. That was the one to Auckland. Oh, it smells like new. Well, they're going to have champagne, of course. Um, it's going to be Dom and Krog on first class. I'll get you a glass of champagne. Absolutely, Dom Perignon. Oh, I'm so jealous. There she goes. <laughs> uh, I should be on that flight, really. So whoever's on it who is an AV geek, enjoy yourselves, because it's a chance to actually, you know, live for. Yeah. As the flight heads towards Sydney, Gino's had a chance to experience the first-class menu and has ordered the fillet steak. The food was great. The beef is, tastes very good. It's my, as I asked for, well done. And it's perfectly cooked and perfectly, a perfect temperature and taste. Service and uh, the food and beverages is fantastic. Two thumbs up. Thank you. But 
For British couple Anne and Malcolm, who have paid nearly £9,000 to travel to their home in Australia, the trip isn't going so well. I think uh, just disappointed. We expected more from uh, Singapore. We fly with uh, Etihad and we found them they've been very good. Uh, we like their first class cabins. We just think that this has turned out to be a bit of a design disaster. The new layout means there's only two double suites in first class, and they're in two singles. Nothing just seems to work. Nothing does seems it? to work very well. I don't think this comes up to the value that we ex that we expected of uh, Singapore Airlines. No. Once the plane lands in Sydney, the airline's efforts to meet the demands of the world's wealthiest passengers will continue. It was an amazing experience and great product, great service. Nothing is really perfect, but it's very, it has been very close to it. Passengers are never satisfied these days. You give them one thing, the appetite actually increases. Sweet class passengers, they're paying so much money for the service that they expect everything to be perfect. All the airlines can spend so much money on a brand new product. Two years later, all the other airlines could have released a better version because they've just copied it and now released a better version. Suddenly theirs is old and then it's back to the drawing board. This is how fast it's changing. You know, they've got the money and let's face it, if I had the money, I would never fly economy. I would always turn left. I would never turn right.